Hi guys, in this video we're going to be painting some skeleton infantry from Earthmark. Scruffy Crow! Ah. Okay, so these guys, uh, you can see me building them in a video, the link will be in the description. Uh, so this video we're going to concentrate on painting them. Uh, I really enjoyed building these, they're quite characterful little sculpts. And I think I managed to get a little bit of sort of drama in each pose. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to getting some paint on these guys. Uh, mostly they're going to be bone, obviously, uh, and then we're going to do some little strips of leather, which is my normal leather recipe, and then uh, some sort of sort of uh, oxidized copper for the helmets, shields. Um, or am I going to do... Oh, I don't know. And then some sort of sort of either rusted or oxidized metals on the helmets and shields and swords and everything, uh, which should be quite interesting. There's 20 here. Uh, we've also got my little necromancer. We might get some paint during this time as well, off to the side, um, which is going to be 19 skeleton warriors uh, with this guy to be an officer, uh, and then this guy being a champion, um, which is just made out of the same kit but with a couple of GW parts. As I said, uh, the video I have, but these will be in the description. I'm going to start these how I start most bone uh, with some Zandri dust. And I'm going to use my normal technique of going at them with a nice soft brush, a nice big brush, uh, most importantly for speed. Uh, but because these are quite delicate little minis, I mean, not as delicate as some skeletons, they're actually surprisingly sturdy, uh, but still relatively uh, fragile. I'm going to be going at them with a properly soft brush. Uh, once again, just using an old uh, makeup brush saved from the, uh, the bin. And I'm just going to paint straight out of the pot. Uh, you will notice these guys have been undercoated. They've actually been undercoated uh, three different times uh, from three different angles. Uh, we started with Halford's matte black uh, from, and I pretty much covered the whole model uh, and tried to get into all the gra gaps, so under their rib cages, behind their shields, all the good stuff. They then got a light dusting with uh, Halford's grey primer, uh, just sort of all over. Uh, just so I can pick out all those details and then from right from the top uh, just straight down they got hit with the Halford's white primer. Now I don't know how much difference this is going to make because we are doing a relatively boring undercoat of Zandri dust. I'm not washing them or anything like that. Quick note, the reason why I started with the black is because if there's anywhere that I can't get to uh, with the brush, if there's any little nooks or crannies that I've missed, uh, I want them to be black. Things like inside the eye holes, I'm really never going to try and paint, so it's nice that they are already black. Um, so even if I was painting these without multiple undercoats, I'd almost always start with black, uh, because I think if you miss a little crack and you've started these on white, sure painting bone over white uh, is easier, if we're going to end up with a fairly light colour. But you want to be really careful about stuff like in there. If that was white and then your bone was any darker uh, than this sort of surrounding area, uh, you're gonna, it's going to look a bit weird. Which I guess is why, as a hobby, we've kind of adopted the black undercoat in general. Certainly one of the reasons why I use it. But I have switched to this sort of uh, multi-layered undercoat for quite a few things. Uh, what I will say from the outset as well is, uh, despite the fact we're starting off relatively light, uh, I am intending these to be quite a dark uh, bone sort of paint scheme. I want these guys to look fairly freshly dug up. Uh, so I won't be using any particularly pristine whites, I don't think. Uh, I want these guys to be sort of yellowed and dirty. For doing the wash, I am using a big, soft crash, craft brush. Uh, it's very gentle, it's very absorbent. Uh, so if you get any pooling anywhere, 
just I can just wipe off the excess off the brush in the pot and that'll pull any pa excess paint out of any pooling. Um, I think this gives me quite a lot of control but at the same time we're still using a big brush um, so we can get through a fair number of these quite quickly. So all we need is a few strokes per model uh, and then make sure there's no pooling and then move on to the next one. Make sure we get those feet. It's also a bit of a, a rule of thumb of mine to always use the biggest brush I can get away with. I remember a long time ago my granddad was showing me some cooking and he always said use the biggest knife you can get away with when you're uh, preparing food. And I think that's definitely true of paint brushes. I think there's often a lot of reasons to use a much bigger brush than people do. Not least that it can save a lot of time in these early stages. Uh, so you're not so bored and fed up with the sight of the models by the time you do switch uh, to the finer detailed miniatures brush to really dive in there for the details. Okay, so I've got the wash on them all and this is what they look like now. Suitably ancient and dirty. I'm gonna leave this wash to dry overnight uh, and I'll come back to them the next day. Okay, so my skeletons are dry and they're looking fairly decrepit. But we are gonna lighten them up a bit from there. We're gonna use some Menoth white base. And though I always say I try not to dry brush, I think skeletons is one of the times where uh, dry brushing is definitely a way forward. So we just get most of that paint off. And then we're just giving this a nice dry brush, mostly down from the top, nice and even. But it doesn't have to be that even because you know we're still trying to make them look sort of dug up. And we're going from this sort of colour to something a bit more like that. Okay, so all my skeletons have had this done now. Uh, it's lightened them up a little bit, uh, but still keeps them looking kind of grubby. I'm going to give them a slight tickle with some Menoth White Highlight. So this is quite light for the colour I'm going for. So if I want to keep my sort of grubby aesthetic, I'm going to have to be quite careful. But I really just want to get a few little bits, just shoulders, heads, uh, teeth, kneecaps maybe, just just to give a little bit of extra highlight and sort of make these guys pop a little bit. I think that's going to work quite nice. So that's basically what we're going for. So we've got the same sort of dull colours as this one. Still looks nice and grubby, but I've just given it that little bit, say on the skull, and the shoulder blade there, just to make it pop. It's very subtle, uh, but I think it's worthwhile, especially with how quick it is. Okay, that was the last one done. Um, so I think that's all my sort of grubby bones effects done. So I'm basically only gonna do three more colors on these guys now, I think. Uh, so I'm gonna do the swords, uh, axe blades, all that sort of stuff. I'm gonna do that in a uh, iron sort of color. Uh, so rusted, rusted sort of iron metal colors. Uh, the shields, I'm going to go for more of a, a goldy bronze with those, as well as the hilts there. Uh, chest pieces, bits of armor, I'll do that in the silver. And anything else, uh, I'm going to do leather. So the rags, the belts. Uh, it's not bone or metal, it's going to be leather. I think keeping the helmet silver, so there will be a little bit of silver on them, uh, will kind of make them gel in with the human part of my army a little bit. Um, try to tie those together a little bit uh, which could be quite good so I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna get all those base layers down uh, just get me started off the first cover on my silver metals is where they're gonna be Mournfang Brown uh, that's gonna be the base uh, for the set of the helmets and the swords and what have you the bronze part is gonna be started off with some warp block bronze and the uh, leather parts my trusty XV88 okay so I've progressed these guys some way forward now all of my base colors are down so we've got the sort of reddish brown where we're going to do silver metal the bronze so dark uh, which is timbits uh what block bronze where we're going to do the dark uh coppers and x v 88 wherever everything else is going to be leather 
I'm kind of maybe thinking about doing the fabric in uh, black, uh, do a bit of a change. Um, but actually, these guys have already become a bit of a chore. Uh, it takes me days to actually get back to them. So I'm probably just not going to invest that much time in them. I just kind of want to finish to a nice level as fast as possible. So another thing is, at glance, these skellies are looking all right. Uh, but I'm, I'm not convinced by the bone colour we've ended up with. It is a little bit lighter than I originally wanted. And even though you can actually see the, the Zandri dust, the shading, I think you can see all the layers. It's not quite sort of gone the way I wanted. Uh, I certainly don't think it's a bad job. Um, but I think we could do better. Last time I painted skeletons, it was some Games Workshop ones, and I ended up doing layer after layer uh, of creams and washes uh, until I got the desired look, which I want to try and avoid this time. But I think what I am going to do is I'm going to take the, the brightest white, I'm going to smooth off some of the uh, bits, like the tops of their heads, and a couple of other places, uh, and get some proper highlights in there. And then I'm going to do another thin brown wash. This time also we can incorporate the leather and the red parts and pull the model down a little bit. Uh, so I'm also going to do the some gold on these first uh, before we do that second wash. It's trying to pull all the different colours together before we do the final highlights. Okay, so my skeletons are currently looking like this. Um, and I'm not quite happy with that. Uh, they look quite nice and dark. Uh, I think the final wash has sort of pulled all those bone colours together. Uh, so what I'm going to work on now is going to be the silver metals. I've got some Kado Red Highlight here. I'm going to use this out of the pot or out of the broken lid more precisely. And I'm getting this on a knackered old makeup brush which I've picked because of how knackered it is. Um, I'm going to take off a lot of the paint and I'm just going to be able to dab just little bits. That's what we're going for on the helmet like that. And these are meant to be rust spots. And just because of the way I'm doing this, this will pick up edges and lines more than it picks up the sort of core. Another tool I used to do something like this is my uh, my bits of uh, blister pack uh, taped onto a brush handle. Um, this is what I'd use if I was doing a bigger area or if I was doing the metal first, uh, but I wanted to do the bone first. Um, so we're gonna have to be a little bit more selective about where we dab these. So this is the sort of thing we're going for. This is my super rusty champion. Rust spots all down his helmet, greaves, and chest, and sword. Uh, we've also got uh, the leather bits here now, which I think the wash have highlighted, and they're looking quite good. Like he's had armor up, like leather strapping or shirts on there, and it's all just sort of rotted away and fallen away. That's also uh, quite a good example of what the shields are looking like, uh, even though this is the most complex shield, because this is a GW one rather than the one that came in the box. I'm going to take a look at the bases now. So, um, currently it's just Rhinoxide, uh, but I'm going to go over with my regular recipe, which is this P3 Gun Corps Brown, which I'm almost out of, uh, and then I'll put a bit of like bone colour. Um, just right at the top, just to completely highlight it all up. Uh, and that'll give me a good basis for any flock and stuff that I want to put on here. Uh. Okay, next up we're going to use this cold steel, which is the brightest silver I have to hand. I'm going to make sure this has got a good shake, because I've not used this in a little while. And with this, I'm going to do quite a lot of highlighting. So any raised parts on the silver metal parts, the bits we've just done rusty so far. I'm going to give a little bit of a stroke with this. It's like the top of his helmet here. Just random other bits and pieces. Uh, the blades on the weapons will be a good example. So I want it to look like, yeah, these guys have just crawled from the grave. 
uh, but already their weapons have seen some use and folded back some of that rust. So I'm going to do some uh, line highlights like that, but also some sort of dabbier sections uh, just to make it look like we've got some of that shiny metal coming through. I'm also going to use this on some of the shield areas, so raised areas on the bronze to, to make that look extra shiny and worn. I think less is, less is more here. Okay, the bases are all done and I've done the black rim and I'm just currently going around with a bit of this uh, nickel oxide. I don't know. Uh, I'm watering down this down a little bit. I'm just really using some of the, the shields and sort of copy uh, bronzy areas. Um, I'm sort of putting some on and then wiping it off a little bit. And I think that's also adding to that nice worn look. Keep it on the sword handles maybe. But I've also been painting the tray to go with them. So this should have the same colours on as the bases. So they should fit in there rather nicely. And some of my old videos, I'd have left them around about here. But due to my new hobby space, um, we get one extra step today. Um, and I'm gonna put some grass and some tufts on there um, and we'll see how they look. And there we have my finished unit. Obviously a lot of the PVA splodges you can see around will dry clear. Uh, what we've added here is some of these dead grass tufts. Uh, this is uh, Muddy Dead Series Play 2mm uh, grass on there and then I've topped it off with some of these um, birch seed bits uh, but I've not separated them out in a while uh, so there's a lot of the seeds mixed in with the, the little leafy bits. Uh, so I need to go and spend some time separating this out so it's easier to use next time. Okay so that final bit of glue is dry now and this is the final base. Uh, those leaves now just look like they're kind of rested on, uh, but I guarantee you uh, they're not going anywhere because the glue sort of soaks into them uh, and they, they're pretty nicely bonded on. And that's the final thing. And I'm actually really happy with that. I think they look great. And that's all for this video. Please let me know what you thought down in the comments. Uh, maybe subscribe for more. And as ever, thanks for watching. Bye.